Hello everybody and thank you very much for attending our webinar series. This is the June 23rd webinar. Uh, we will be discussing Abacus 2016 GPU computing. Uh, this is uh, the second in the series so far. The previous one being on Abacus and Tusk uh, optimization, uh, 3D printing and additive manufacturing. Uh, you can find this on our website or on our YouTube channel. We will be uh, giving you the links uh, a little bit at the end of the, uh, the presentation. So as far as the agenda that we're proposing today, uh, we would first do some introductions. So who we are, who, what we're doing here. Uh, we'll also define GPU computing and, and actually discuss some benefits why we're even doing that. Um, we'll talk about the actual Abacus GPU computing uh, through a certain number of benchmarks and face cases that we run ourselves and to draw some conclusions on what the, the actual benefit is. And the premises of this, um, this presentation is smaller models, smaller companies, uh, not necessarily the, the enormous models that, that some of the, 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 the bigger outfits run. Uh, we'll, we'll then close with the summary and I have a certain number of people that I wanted to, to recognize who helped us put this together uh, from you know hardware and software vendors uh, particularly. So we'll start with the company motto both from Tentac LLC and the Soul Systems. So we're here to ass assist manufacturing companies in designing better, safer products in a faster and more cost-effective manner. And Zoo Systems provides business and people with 3D experience universes to imagine sustainable innovations capable of harmonizing product, nature, and life. So when we combine those together, uh, we get some pretty interesting results as far as our customers are concerned. So who we are first? First, we are a certified women-owned small business. We do a large amount of business with the government or their prime contractors. We are ITAR registered and we have a cage code and a DD2345 active um, certification. We have offices in Los Angeles, California, and Berwick, Massachusetts, covering uh, both sides of the country. We are um, distributed in three different divisions, engineering services, software solutions, and education services. Throughout um, our activities, we're involved with a certain number of associations such as AIAA, we're a corporate sponsor of AIAA. Uh, we work with uh, GUIDEP, which is a government industry um, cooperation program. We work with VIDA, which is a, a uh, organization that defines the standards for embedded electronics uh, throughout what, what we do on a daily basis, and I talk about that a little bit. Uh, we, we have a lot of input to be there. Uh, personally, this is all presented today, so this is me. I come from the aerospace industry, from what's now Airbus. Um, this was not necessarily Airbus at the time, uh, it was Eurocopter, then Aerospecial. Um, working both in dynamics and stress uh, on certain major programs in Europe like the Tiger, uh, NH-90, helicopters, Ion-4 and 5, uh, ballistic missile, M4, M45, um, doing basically either finite element analysis or running a team that was doing finite element analysis or consulting. Um, about 25 years in the industry, both in Europe and the US, uh, worked in engineering management services for a short number of years and as well as uh, technical consultants for, for CAE uh, application companies. Some of the products and projects that we've worked on over, over the years, uh, first of all, we provide design test and analysis services to our customers. Um, not necessarily all of it, or sometimes all of it. Uh, a certain number of our products, so the projects that we worked on, on the, the, the top right corner, we can see a telescope, which is part of a telescope array that is installed in, Chi in Chile. And this will be 
completely deployed uh, this year. And uh, basically, what the uh, the manufacturer of this this product has asked us to do was to put together a fine element model, the whole system, to look at a certain number of things: vibrations, uh, shock, uh, thermal expansion, uh, seismic loads, uh, wind loads. So we, we did a lot of, of uh, multi physics applications there. Um, on the left-hand side, this is more a civil engineering uh, type of activity, uh, although there was a certain number of mechanical things to do too. Uh, this is a kiosk that is being deployed in New York City that provides uh, Ethernet, Internet access, provides 411, 911 VoIP uh, chargers, so it's deployed across the, uh, the city. Um, so we had to, to deal with helping the design, guiding the design, both mechanically, thermally, loads uh, coming from environments such as wind or ice or, or sun, and also helping the company pass the design review with the, uh, the city of New York. Uh, in the center is more what we do typically uh, as uh, avionics systems or defense electronics, uh, electronic warfare type of, type of products. Uh, this, we, we participate in a lot of programs and, and we are usually uh, involved at the analysis level, although sometimes uh, this particular project we were actually involved early on in the design project. So we could also influence the design tool analysis so there was a very successful product that um, actually passed all the tests, all the qualification tests uh, without a hitch. Uh, and, and we had confidence in that because of the analysis that we had done before. Uh, thermal shock vibration, a lot of fatigue analysis uh, to to uh, to design this uh, this project, this product. Uh, this is a U.S. Navy product that's in in service at this point, and it's it's flying on the E2 aircraft. Now we're moving on to the software solution side of the company. This is the side that deals with the SOS systems. Uh, the value solution partner uh, program, which is uh, what essentially a reseller of the high-end products that, that the SOS system sells, such as Katia, Inovia, and the Simulia brand. We cover the East and West Coast, and we're also able to uh, sell and teach classes for Katia, Inovia, and Simulia. Uh, we have a training facility in the OLA office, which we we have uh, training classes for different subjects uh, at regular, regular on a regular basis, and also we travel to our customer sites if needed. Uh, and lastly, we have received a, a little uh, pat in the back from from the Soul System last year. This was a Partner Marketing Excellence Award uh, for you know doing a, a good job, I guess, at promoting the products in, in the uh, in the marketing side. So the SOS systems themselves, so they are a much larger company, much, much larger than us, naturally. Uh, they are close to 15,000 employees. They are a very science-driven company, uh, investing a lot in technology, seeing technology or the future of technology ahead of, of their competitors very often, uh, investing in, in things that no one else would invest right away and, and finding out that two, three years later people are playing catch up with them. So that, that's happened a lot and that continues to happen. Um, this is an enormous company with about 15,000 people once again, right, close to 200,000 customers, a uh, lot of partners and, and pretty comfortable revenues so over $3 billion. The Soul Systems has a certain number of brands and which are all represented under the 3D Expanse platform umbrella. So uh, you have applications such as SolidWorks, Katia, uh, 3D Design, Mechanical Design, for instance. You have applications such as Delamia, which is a uh, factory automation and, and simulation uh, application. And you have Simulia, which is mechanical simulation, and which we'll discuss a lot more about this. Um, Simulia as a brand is, again, it's in itself a large company. It's a, bit, a little bit over 1,000 1, employees, um, 150,000 users, 
lots of partners, very technology driven, and the, the flagship of uh, Simulia is Abacus, naturally finite element solver. And their, um, I guess their motto, their, their, their brand name is Realistic Simulation. And through a lot of multiphysics and a lot of uh, high-end technology built in, in the solvers, uh, we can achieve uh, realistic simulation. So the portfolio of uh, Simulia, naturally the biggest chunk is Abacus. We, we discussed about that. So uh, explicits or crash code, CFD, electromagnetics, thermal, lots of lots of applications. Um, and it's supported by other uh, parts of, of the, uh, the Simulia branch such as AFI safe which is a fatigue analysis, or TUSCA, which is uh, optimization, both structural optimization and fluid optimization. And also uh, an application such as uh, EyeSight, which helps you put together processes. So you can connect Abacus to Tosca to an external uh, CFD code, for instance, to to Excel to and, and put together custom applications to to perform uh, different simulations. So now we're going to move on to GPU computing. Uh, we'll start simply by uh, a few definitions on on the GPU computing and why is it what what value does it bring? And it's very simple. Uh, GPU computing is used to accelerate the uh, processing of, of data uh, by the CPU. So this was started by NVIDIA in uh, a little bit less than, than 10 years ago. And basically, looking at the architecture of a GPU, this is a lot of, lot of cores, a lot of smaller cores. And if you compare that to the CPU, you know, which is should number 8, 6, 12, nowadays it's 16, possibly up to 20. Uh, a GPU is over, is, is in the hundreds, and sometimes in the thousands of, of cores. So why not use that as a coprocessor? And this is exactly what GPU computing does. And all of a sudden you have that massively parallel architecture available to you. So essentially turning your workstation into a small little cluster. And that, that's exactly, when, exactly what's, what's going on. So in order to take advantage of this the, this, the codes, such as Abacus, have to be compiled using a certain number of, uh, of routines and, and APIs. So there's two uh, dominant APIs at this point, the CUDA architecture, which is uh, NVIDIA proprietary. So this is running strictly on NVIDIA hardware. And then there's an open CL uh, language, which comes from, from Apple that's, that's royalty free. And this allows the AMD hardware to, to actually do, uh, offer GPU computing to, um, to Abacus. Uh, we can look at a quick little video from... Uh All right, I introduced you Leonardo. And he's going to paint a picture for you guys in the way that a CPU might do it, as a series of discrete actions performed sequentially, one after the other. In three, two, one. Uh, let me speed it up. So this is simulating at this point the, the CPU calculation. Ladies and gentlemen, Leonardo. <laughs> When we hit this trigger on this thing, 2,100 gallons of air goes through these accumulators, out these valves, into all 1,100 of these tubes, into these tubes in which the bottom of is a paintball. Each of those paintballs will fly across seven feet of space and in 80 milliseconds reach its target. Hopefully, when it's all said and done, it's going to paint the Mona Lisa. GPU <laughs> painting demonstration. Yep. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, science class is now over. Thank you. 
Okay, so this was a, a short illustration of what the GPU computing core processing is, is performing. Lots of small little cores performing single task, but thousands of them. Uh, so this is this is where we get a lot of uh, a lot of benefits in, in solution uh, solution ties for finite element analysis, for instance. Um, so Abacus, and primarily the Abacus standard application has has been highly accelerated in the, the solver side. Uh, this is the bottleneck of the, uh, the Abacus standard or, or any finite element solver. Uh, your Xbox solver, AMS solver, has been accelerated to GPU computing, and this has been going on for a, a good 10 years now, uh, at least on the CUDA side and OpenCL for maybe a little six or seven years. Um, one of the interesting things is it's available at the workstation level it's available in the cluster environment, and it's available both with a single CPU and GPU, or a hybrid mode, multi-GPUs and multi-cores. So you can have a, a cluster environment with 60 cores and three GPUs, and the, the code is able to distribute the, uh, the, the, the jobs to the different GPUs, different cores in the GPUs, and, and keep track of everything. Uh, this is available in Linux and Windows, and again, we mentioned OpenCL support for AMD hardware and CUDA support naturally for NVIDIA. Uh, one of the uh, the interesting things of this uh, GPU computing, apart from the performance gain, is the token cost. Um, it's very reasonable, and, and in fact, when we look at at the graph on the the, the cost of uh, tokens, GPU and CPU, it's, it's really at some point, there, there's a couple of times where if depending on your, your installation that you actually are better off with a GPU than as far as token count and cost and usage than, than, than adding cores. Uh, and it's also extremely easy to access. There's practically nothing to say or to do in, uh, in, in the UI being like a CAE, being a text, uh, command line or being the 3D experience v6, you just one click of a button saying I want one GPU or I want two GPUs and off you go. So there's absolutely nothing special, no compilation, no nothing to do. Just just uh, say I want to use GPU and Abacus would do the rest. So and there's naturally a lot of benchmarks being published. Uh, Majority coming from the, the two main vendors, again, um, NVIDIA and AMD, showing performance gains, showing, uh, you know, the, the, the gigantic models in 50,000 modes, 20 million degrees of freedom, and, you know, this is not necessarily, this is great, this is great functionality, this is great uh, speed up, but what about us? What about the little guys? We, we, we make 5 million degrees of freedom model, uh, a lot of the stuff we do has two, three hundred modes. Do we gain anything from that? And and that's kind of the object of of what we're going to 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 look at. Um, so we're going to look at the 2016 version of Abacus, so the latest and greatest. Although we're going to compare a little bit with the the previous version, 6.14, just a, as a reference to see where GPU computing is going and what has been done between. 2015 and 2016, and we'll see that there's some some very nice improvements even just with that. So the study started uh, started at the end of last year, close to Christmas time. So we had time on our hands a little bit, and we started looking at hey, you know, we got this graphics card there in the computer. We never use it. It's a server. Uh, can we actually turn it on and see what happens and, and see if Abacus does does a little better? Uh, we didn't have necessarily a big model to play with at first. We you know we didn't want to to tie the computer that much, so a little little tiny model, and you know a Quadro 4000. And we'll discuss what a Quadro 4000 is and it's just a linear statics benchmark. So from that we started with a four core solve, and you see it's about 300 seconds. So not not an enormous um, solve, but then we'll say, okay, well, this 300 seconds solve and four core. What do I get if I do eight core? 
Well, I, I go down to 200. So Abacus is pretty decently scaling, even for a tiny problem. Uh, now I'll say, well, what about four core and one GPU? Turns out the GPU brings more value than doubling the number of cores. And, and again, on a tiny problem like this, it's like, well, can we push it a little more? Yes, you can. In fact, adding the GPU to the eight CPUs brings even still some benefits. And how far can we go? Well, we went all the way to 12 core plus, uh, plus one GPU, and we practically divided the time by two. Soft time. So that, that was encouraging, and there was a certain number of people um, discussing this, asking us to, what about this, what about that? Have you looked at, you know, different hardware, different solutions? And so this is what started all this, and we presented a, 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 some of this at the Science in the Age of Experience at, uh, in Boston uh, in May, uh, and this is kind of a continuation and augmentation of this. Uh, with a little bit more numbers and, and different hardware. Um, so what we looked at, well, we looked at things that, that we do all day. And uh, again, we are very heavy in defense electronics, and we do that on a probably two or three a week. Uh, this is a subsystem. This is a small subsystem. This is a single ball computer. And basically, the the systems we have hold some, some sometimes five up to maybe twenty of those stashed in in a chassis. And so we look at a, a lot of things at this level. We look at shock and vibration. We look at thermal expansion. Um, and and so we wanted to take that as a very representative of what we would do. And say, okay, well, we, you know, we know how long it takes to us uh, to to do that. What if we include GPU computing in the in the mix? Uh, so we started building uh, test cases, and this is a generic. This is no nobody's uh, nobody's model. Uh, this is all personal design. And basically, we have that design in Katia. We're looking at it there on the, in the 3D experience, Katia and an Inovia on the on the turntable to see how many parts we have. This is an assembly. Uh, from the 3D experience, naturally, we're inside the Abacus environment. Um, you know, we do performing assembly assembly modeling, assembly FEM, and we built a 3 million degrees of freedom model composed mostly of bricks and tetrahedrons, so, and, of course, some springs and, and connections like this. Uh, we run three cases, uh, linear statics, non-linear statics, and surface-surface uh, -surface contacts and kind of looked at different hardware and different configurations and see what happened to GPU computing. So the first set of results, and this was presented, that's the one that was presented uh, uh, in Boston, and, and this is the initial study, is all NVIDIA-centric. Uh, and so this is with the, looking at the CUDA GPU computing, so what's built in, in Abacus 2016. The benchmark hardware that we have, so we have, you know, all, all workstations and our little work group uh, solver. So those are all running Windows 10, 64-bit. They are Xeon machines, uh, different different versions, different um, generations. Not not the latest and greatest. We're you know we're a small company. We don't necessarily buy new computers every year. Uh, although they they have decent performance and and you know decent specs. Um, 64 gig of RAM, for instance, for all ZA20, and all of them include RAID 0 SSD, so we're not bogged down by by the I/O. Uh, so those two machines that we looked at, uh, the workstation uses a K4000, so this is an NVIDIA Quadro K4000. This is one generation or two behind, and the solver is using a, an NVIDIA Quadro 4000. Honestly, there was a slot available. <laughs> And the Quadro 4000 was sitting on somebody's desk, and they'll say, "Okay, let's put it in." That's and since since we've seen the results, it's been plugged in and it's not leaving this machine. Um, so, as far as we mentioned, Quadro, this, this, and that. So let's let's look at the, the particular specs of those um, those cards, and equally importantly, the price of those things. So. 
Quadro 4000 again. This is something from 2010. The the Nvidia guys that we talked to, they kind of chuckle on looking at this, and this is Jurassic Park for them. Um, this is you know already from 2010. You can see 256 cores. So we already had 256 cores six years ago in the GPU that we can have for $200. Uh, we can't find that new, so $200 is going to be a used card, but hey, you know, it's it's not that bad. Uh, and we're looking at the, the memory interface, memory bandwidth, all this plays a role in the performance. And equally importantly, we're looking at the actual peak performance, both in double precision and single precision. Um, in so you can see at 0.5 teraflops in single precision and about half of that in, in double precision. Now, some of those cars are, are strictly single precision, so they would perform fairly poorly in double precision uh, calculations. Unfortunately, some of the, uh, the, the things that we need for, for Abacus are double precision. Uh, so that's the, the case for the K4000. So the K4000, this is a, a much newer card. Um, this is a fairly moderate or, or mid-range card for, for CAD. It's got good performance, and it's you can see already many more cores to do parallel processing. The memory interface is a little a little uh, shallower, and the bandwidth is higher. This is a 2013 car, so three years younger. Um, that being said, it does not do uh, double precision. It's very nice performance in single precision, but nothing much in double. And again, this can be this can be obtained for about eight hundred dollars street price. Now comes the the big guns, the Tesla. Uh, so Tesla K40, Tesla K80. Those are dedicated processing, GPU processing uh, machines. They are not a graphics card. You can't plug your monitor to it. It's dedicated to calculation. Uh, and we can see about 3,000 parallel processing cores all of a sudden. So we have a cluster inside a, a little box that looks like a graphics card. Plugs, plugs to the PCI uh, interface. Memory interface is wide, bandwidth is huge, and double precision, single precision, they're, they're, just, they're just enormous. Um, so this is the kind of, kind of things we, we look at. So 4,000 and K4,000, those are the things that we have in-house. K40, we, we found a way of, of using one, and, and I'll discuss that a little later. Um, first, first things first, let's look at your know, moderate to old uh, graphics card and little solver. We started with six CPUs, and again, the solve is not an enormously long solve. It's 900, 900 seconds. Uh, this is wall clock seconds. So if we add a GPU to the mix, and again, on $200, 2010 um, graphics card. All of a sudden, we're solving the same model, we drop to about 600 seconds from 900. So we're about a third faster. And I say, okay, well that's that's fine. If I double my CPU number, I'm going to blow that out of the water. Well, actually no. We're still faster than 12 CPU, and the token cost between six CPU plus one GPU and 12 CPU is significant. And one of the things we could do now, if we have enough tokens, we can run two jobs at the same time. You know, with six CPUs plus one GPU, where with 12, we have to wait for the first one to be done to, to, to process the second one. And equally interesting, we took the same model on the same hardware with the same GPU, everything the same, same settings. Let's look at Abacus 6.14, so last year's, um, last year's version. And well, it turns out, last year's version is about 20% slower, So, which can be attributed mostly to the GPU computing. And this actually is in line with what Simulia has, has said about the progress they've made and the, the improvement they've made to the solver in, in 2016 with regards to GPU computing. So we verified that even on a tiny model. A 900 seconds solve, which you know saves us well, it saves us 300 seconds. You know we do that 10, 15 times a day. At the end of the day, we pile up an hour, two hours of of extra work that we can do. All customers are pretty happy about that. We can deliver faster. We can deliver more and faster. 
Now, um, let's look at the other case. So this is on the bigger workstation. But the bigger workstation has a K4000. And the K4000, if you remember, is not very, very good with double precision. Um, so we started at 4 CPU, so this is a longer run, about 4200 seconds. Now, with the one GPU we have, we got only 7% gain, so not great. Especially when we double the CPU count, we are about 17% faster. So this one is not so great. Um, if we, so it would be more a, a problem that would be solved well with eight CPUs. But then if we had the, to do eight CPUs, one GPU, we get an extra 14% of performance. So it's not that bad. That being said, this, this particular case suffered greatly from the card not performing well at double precision. Uh, and, and it's a known fact, the, the K4000, all, all the simple pre single precision cards don't perform as well in, in certain instances. And this is one of, one of those. This is why there's a lot of uh, warnings and use at your own risk and not every model is going to perform the same because, because of those things. Uh, sometimes you assume the GPU is going to help you and it doesn't. And, and just because of, of you know a bandwidth issue or a double precision issue like this. Now, I mentioned earlier that we put our hands on a K40. And the way we did that is by using our partner's uh, Rescale cloud solution. So Rescale, we use Rescale for a certain number of things. Uh, this is basically a, a cluster that is available to us. It's available not just us because we're special, because we're a customer of Rescale. And basically, that, that gives us a, a web interface to a cluster. So we've got a queue system. We submit jobs to, you know, different solvers, and Abacus is one of them. And we're looking at, you know, the performance there. So if, if you go on the right-hand right, right -hand side, you see the, the, this kind of a la carte um, settings as far as what kind of CPU you want to use, how many do you want to use, do you want... Uh, InfiniBand, do you want a, you know higher latency in the I/O in the, in the network I/O? Uh, do you want SSDs for the storage? So you, there's a lot of things, a lot of things to play with, including if we look at the tungsten towards the bottom, tungsten has a NVIDIA Tesla K40 available, so you can actually turn on the K40 in an HPC environment and, and look at the benefits. Uh, this this is a very we use that a lot for for not just for Abacus. As soon as the jobs get too big for, for, for all computers, we just submit to that. It's really in and out. Uh, you need a good internet connection, of course, but that's expected. And, uh, and everything else is completely transparent. I, I watch, I monitor myself just like if I was monitoring myself in the office on, on a solver in the office, exactly the same. Uh, and on the, um, on the bottom there, you can see, um, one of our success stories that we wrote with uh, Rescale, and this was an uh, explicit uh, solve. Uh, it's one of the uh, drop tests, uh, equivalent drop tests from, uh, from from military applications. And this this we we actually scaled uh, pretty high in the number of cores. Naturally, we couldn't do that in the office, and we didn't have much time to perform the analysis. So Rescale was uh, was the savior there. So. As far as how we use the K40 and what we get out of the K40, so we really, really limited the uh, HPC environment. Uh, say, so, okay, I want to use eight CPUs and 16 CPUs. You have to work hard to prevent the uh, the uh, the cluster from using 20 or 40 cores, and, and so we're really running the horse on, on three legs only. Uh, but this was more representative of what the GPU was bringing. That if I use 64 cores. Um, so the initial solve, and again, this is the same solve as um, as what we had in the Z820. So you see already there's a benefit that the, uh, the, the cores are faster. Uh, and also it's a Linux environment where we're running on Windows. But if I, to my eight CPUs, if I had, if I add my Tesla K40, all of a sudden we get 41% increase, so almost double the performance. For adding one GPU, once again, the cost is one token, 
over eight CPUs. And equally interesting, we beat the 16 CPU cluster with adding with all eight CPUs in one GPU by, you know, 8%. And again, the 16 CPU is no slouch. It's it's 36 percent faster than 8 CPU, and so it's it's not, you know, we go from 2400 or 2300 seconds to 1500 seconds. Those are moderate sized jobs for a cluster environment, and we still get that much benefit. So it's it's pretty significant. Abacus as a whole scales very nicely. Um, same thing now, even more interesting, or, or in the same. Uh, really, the, the results are consistent with uh, with the cluster, but this time we went back to our Quadro 4000. So again, the Quadro 4000 on this Z800, the CPUs are old, four or five years old. The GPU is old, four or five years old. So you would expect everything to to, to behave the same way as the brand new hardware, relatively uh, relative to each other. So a six CPU, this one is 26,000 seconds. <laughs> Um, compared to the 8,000 seconds uh, from, from the other uh, computers. So 6 CPUs, we get 26,000. Now we add uh, 6 CPUs and 1 GPU, now all of a sudden we're at 14,000 seconds. So this is not insignificant anymore. This is a large amount of time that we can save. This is a large amount of time that we can use to to make the second load case. A lot of the other uh, stuff we do, particularly in the defense, there, there's a myriad of, of load cases that we have to look at. Different directions, different environments, qualification, and endurance loads, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. So the more we can process, the better. And not so much just the, the time it takes to process, but at least the amount that we can process. Um, and, and again, we see there, even on this, on this computer, uh, with this hardware, we are 11% faster than a 12 CPU. And have we reached the limit of the CPU and the GPU? No. If we add the GPU to the 12 CPU, we gain another 26%. So we're not completely done. We haven't, you know, completely clogged the um, the, the cores and and the memory and the bandwidth. We're still gaining. So they, they're still. So we go from six CPU, 26,000, to 12 CPU and one GPU, 11,000. So that's very significant. Again, this is all the hardware. 47% faster with a $200 card. So there is there is some really cool technology inside the GPU computing solvers in, in Abacus that lets us do that. And we use a lot of, of different products naturally because we have to, because we're consultants. And I can tell you this is by far the, the final element code that takes the, the most advantage of the GPU computing. Now, what happens to sometimes to all uh, to uh, the same solution, but then we start oversizing the uh, the cluster? So we use 16 CPUs and 16 CPUs plus one GPU. So this is again on the rescale cluster. So now we get only 10% faster. So and we look at you know the 32 CPUs. This actually scales better on a number of CPUs versus one one GPU. So this this one we probably bug down the uh, the GPU a little bit by having too many CPUs kind of uh, um, attacking the GPU at the same time, and that that can happen. And that that happens, uh, you know, on the workstations as well. At some point, the, the the GPU can keep up with all the requests from all the cores from the CPU. Um, so it looks like this one we cannot hit the. Uh, the, uh, the the snag there uh, naturally the way we would do that uh, if we wanted to actually use GPU take more advantage of it is we we get two GPUs in there uh, that's this is what uh, what what would happen there uh, that would cost us a little more but you know this is the price to pay to to get faster results now uh, we did the same thing with the OpenCL um, implementation uh, this is a little a little uh, younger as far as implementation. This this came about uh, the Abacus 2011 uh, or 6.11, sorry. And so this is for the support of the AMD GPU uh, hardware. So same model, 
this is again this this is an addition to what we presented before for the uh, for the Nvidia um, and Nvidia hardware. So we haven't completely done the same uh, the, sa the same benchmarks. First thing I don't want to do is start uh, putting those uh, together and look at who's better and you know Nvidia and, and AMD and all this. I, I don't really want to discuss this right now. I want to discuss how well does Abacus scale with GPU computing, both with NVIDIA and AMD. It turns out they scale well, um, and, and you know there, there's differences in naturally and, and all this, but in general, they, they scale well. So same model that we build in the 3D experience. Uh, this one, we, we run on the two load cases, or two test cases. Um, model analysis, so we run a model analysis for a certain number of, uh, for a, a frequency range, and this is a Langshell solver. Uh, we're running on Windows. Unfortunately, AMS is not available on, on Windows yet for with GPU computing. And we also look at shock response. Uh, we do a lot of shock response, and one of the things we like about Abacus is how fast uh, it performs shock response compared to other products. Uh, it, it is, and if, if we have people using Nastran and that, that are looking at this, I'm sure they'll, they'll recognize the, the solution time, and they probably see that their national stuff runs in about four or five times longer than that. Um, so this just a, a, a side note uh, for, for shock response. Shock response is, is significant as far as number of calculations. Um, we st it starts with a model analysis, then it's doing a, a model combination of results, calculating stress, uh, peak stresses, and peak accelerations, and all this. So. Workstations um, only. Okay, we have only AMD products in, in the workstations. We don't have any AMD product in our, in our little solver. Uh, so the Z800, uh, Z820 workstation, same same idea except instead of having a um, a, a Quadro, we have a Fire Pro 8100. Uh, it's one of the top of the line. It's not the top of the line, but it's close uh, from AMD. In and also, we have a regular workstation that, that is a, a slightly older workstation. So it's a same thing, 4-core, Xeon, a uh, little slower, a uh, little less memory, so 24 gig of RAM, and certainly a, a, a much smaller graphics card. So the, uh, the Fire Pro 4300 4, is, a, is a small form factor card. In fact, this is a, a 4 gig, and we'll discuss that, uh, 4 gig card video card that doesn't even require an extra power supply plug, which is very rare these days for, for CAD uh, type of, of graphics cards. And naturally, everything is on RAIDSIO or SSD, so we don't, we don't suffer uh, as much on the I.O. So the numbers that we present, they are slightly different because uh, in, in NVIDIA world, uh, we, we talked about CUDA cores. Well, um, AMD calls them stream processors, but that's the same idea. So the Fire Pro 4300, and, and again, the picture is not exactly, makes it believe like it's a full-size card. It's actually a half-size card. It's really tiny. It, it fits in a, um, it fits in a server. We could fit there probably three in a, in a, uh, in a rack mount server. Um, memory interface, the same, the same number. So it's, it's on par with um, a low end, um, Low-end quadro, uh, for instance, still four gig of uh, of DDR5, and it does offer a very decent amount of, of uh, performance on single precision, but it does not uh, provide much in double precision, which again is going to hinder some of our solutions. Um, but is it three hundred dollars street price? So it's not that bad for a four gig uh, video card. Okay, then on the other side. And this is this year's or, or last year's uh, last year's uh, AMD offering. Um, on the other side, we got the, the Fire Pro 8100. So that's that's more of a heavy duty uh, card. And if you look, it is close in terms of, of performance, both in, in teraflops and double and single precision, and bandwidth and number of processors. It's close to the Tesla K40. The difference is we're $1,200. Okay, so it's a, it's a slight difference. Uh, and this one is this one is the uh, 
is a card that you need to plug to the power supply, you know, aux and, and all this. So this is a double size um, card, so it's it's big, just just like the uh, the K40. So uh, an old little Migu Z400 workstation, looking at a model analysis. Uh, first of all, uh, with two CPUs, it's about 1600 seconds, and we're not getting that much. What uh, with a GPU there. I mean, it's a tiny GPU. Uh, we're getting only 10%. And if we double the count, of course, we'll go faster. Uh, we'll, we'll go significantly faster. So about 20% faster than, than the GPU. So this one doesn't help us that much. But if all we had was enough tokens to run two CPUs and one GPU, well, why not run the GPU? We get 10% 10 benefit. Why not? Uh, if we look now on the ZA20, this model get, gets us 27% faster than 4 CPU, and we start seeing the same trends as as the NVIDIA uh, stuff. And again, the numbers, the solution time, and all this cannot be compared because those are not the same procedures that we're using, the same the same solves, and, and uh, the same analysis types. And that was done on purpose, so we don't we don't start you know a, a a fanboy war, if you want, between AMD and NVIDIA. Um, so we still see we're about 27% faster with one GPU, so we're getting that, that 27 to 30%. And also, interestingly enough, we are 25% faster than a CPU. So again, as far as my token usage, I would certainly use four CPUs plus one GPU. The computer will be pegged far less, and on top of it, I'm using less less tokens. And I get my results faster. So uh, there's no reason why, I, even in a small model like that, again, less than 10 minutes old, we're still, we're still gaining, uh, gaining a fair amount. Now, if we look, again, this one, shock response. So shock response, we, we gain uh, not as much, not 30%, but we gain about 20% uh, between a 4 CPU and a 4 CPU plus 1 GPU solve. So that's pretty significant. Uh, that's that's about on this particular case about 300 seconds, five minutes. Okay, I get my results five minutes earlier. That sometimes it's important. Sometimes it's 4:55 versus 5 p.m. delivery. You know, close up before close of business, for instance. I get my results five minutes earlier. So that's that 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 is valuable. Um, and, and also, once again, we have better performance with four CPUs plus one GPU than eight CPUs. So once again, the, the token cost and it is and the computer uh, hardware uh, in use is, is less, and we get the results faster. So again, it's a no-brainer. And in, as a rule of thumb, we typically have the one GPU token in use all the time. Uh, every now and then, we got some surprises, but for, for the most part, uh, it's always on, and we gain 10%. Even if it's only 10%, we gain. We're, we're still happy with that. So, uh, after seeing all this, uh, we have a certain number of things that that we saw that we want to talk about. First of all, there is no reason for not using. If you have one token floating that you can use, turn GPU computing on. Almost everybody, if not everybody, has a capable graphics card on their workstation. We use the K, K4000, we use a Quadro 4000. Those are three to five to six years old. They still bring 20, 25, 30%. Uh, we can use a, a, an AMD 4300 that does not require any additional powers. It's a very, uh, very slim, uh, very moderate card as far as uh, power usage. And so your computer is not going to heat up that much, and, and you know all all this, we gain 15, 20 percent sometimes. So why not? Okay, this is again not a question of saving, not buying enough tokens or saving on tokens. It's a question of using the tokens in a more cost-effective manner to obtain shorter solution times, uh, stress the hardware a little less. And you know, get get smarter about that. I mean, spending a thousand dollars on a uh, or, or twelve hundred dollars on a, an AMD eighty one hundred 
can save us that much in a week. So uh, the, the hardware is paid for itself in a week or two weeks or a month. That's, that's very easy to justify. Uh, similarly, the, the K40, this, this takes on you know, the biggest jobs. This, this saves 30% of the solve or sometimes 50%. This is justifiable very easily in a month. Uh, so there, there is no, uh, there's really not, not any argument against it. Uh, of course, some solutions are not there yet. Um, the AMS solver on Windows, which is a big one that will come, uh, explicit, it's not there, but it will come. And this this more complicated, uh, there's a lot more work to do on this. Um, and again, you know, the GPU computing allows us to, and that, that was really an eye-opener, to revive some of the old hardware that we deemed unfit for running Abacus at, at a fairly high level. Um, you know, the GPU kind of kicked the, uh, the you know, the solver back into gear uh, by, by getting the 20, 25%, 30% solve time reduction by simply saying, okay, use the old $200 card. Why not? Okay. And the other thing that, that, that was noticeable and that was verified, so I was very happy to see that, is, is that the difference between 614 and 2016 was significant. Uh, so the, the Simulia development team has worked very hard, and again, when I mentioned they are a technology company, they, they, are, they are really investing in the future, and GPU computing is certainly something that, 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 is, uh, that is a reality. And, you know, getting 20% 20, 20 better um, solution time or shorter time is, 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 is real. I mean, this is something, you know, if we, if I was to tell you I give you 20% of your time back every day, you would take it. Um, and, you know, on, on the other side, you know, maybe we can't afford a, a, um, a big uh, K40 or a K80. K80, uh, NVIDIA K80 is a, is a double K40, so you can imagine this is a distributed memory inside a distributed memory. This is, this is a, a beast. And... Uh, AMD has the 9150, 9170, which is equivalent to uh, that does the same. And so maybe we can't necessarily afford that, but we have our friends at Rescale, for instance, that, that allow, allow us to, to use that. And this was, and this still is, uh, a great time saver when we run out of, of, of computer resource, which happens. Uh, we have, you know, the Rescale people to, to lean on, including GPU computing. Um, and to that effect, I wanted to thank a certain number of people that, that helped us uh, put together those things. So Rescale, again, Sarah and uh, Mulianto helped us. Uh, they provided access to, to their, their server, uh, let us use a certain number of things that, that were not necessarily um, available to everybody. Uh, and, and, you know, I want also to, to thank the guys at NVIDIA and AMD, Bascal and Antoine for helping us and putting together, steering us in the right direction and, and you know, giving us some tips. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is at no point did we use any beta, beta code, both for the Abacus, so this is out of the box code. The drivers were the latest WHQL drivers from both NVIDIA and AMD, no beta driver, no particular tweak. None of the uh, the GPU computing that we did was was using any custom things. We uh, we did um, we did use just the standard out of the box uh, graphics card driver and, and you name it. Um, this is it for for today. So we have um, more to discuss and more to put together, which we would add to our website, and we would let you guys. Uh, Download this presentation, download the, uh, the, the discussion, continue the discussion. You can find us online at, at our website, uh, tantechllc.com. You can find us on Twitter, and you can follow the YouTube channel. That's where we're most likely going to post uh, this webinar. And you can look at us on LinkedIn, too. And we use all of those media to, to post some, some uh, information about, um, about the... Uh, the, the, the Abacus and Simulia and Katia and the, the Soul Systems uh, uh, products in general. So thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you next month, hopefully. We'll present uh, the 3D Experience cloud-based uh, 
design analysis and, and PLM solutions uh, together in the context of a, a little design analysis group. Uh, so, so we're cloud-based, uh, very, very interesting, very easy to deploy. So we'll, we'll have that um, next uh, next week, uh, next next month. All right. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you soon.